What's going on guys and welcome to part three of our IPv6 address videos. In this part, we're going to go over the different IPv6 address types, um, their prefixes, and then also I'm going to show you how on Cisco IOS, how we're going to assign an IPv6 to an interface, and I'm also going to show you how to enable IPv6 routing on that network device. So the first types we're going to go over is the IPv6 unicast addresses. So the first one we're going to touch on is a global unicast. These are the globally unique and routable addresses that we are able to route on the internet. So again, unlike IPv4, we don't really have that concept of public and private. We just have these global unicasts and link local, which kind of function the same way, but we don't need NAT, or we don't translate that link local to uh, do internet connectivity across the web, right? So with this global unicast, we're going to have a prefix length of this, right? Sorry, double colons there. So a global unicast address is going to be within this range, okay? 2000 to 3 FFF in the first hex tech. So on the exam or through your studies, if you end up seeing a IPv6 address that falls within this range, that is going to be a global unicast address. And then here we have our link local. This is going to be any address with a prefix length or prefix of FE80 slash eight. And these link local addresses are actually going to be created right when an interface uh, comes online if it's capable of IPv6. And it's going to be used just for communication within our lands, okay? So if I bring up command prompt, I type in IP config. Let me fix this screen a little bit here and hit enter. We're going to see that even on my wireless LAN adapter, there's my link local address, okay? So on the VMware Nix, you also have a link local address here as well. Okay, and even on router or switch interfaces, the link local address is also going to be used. And again, these link local addresses, they are used for communication within our LANs, okay? And then we have these reserved IP addresses. We have a loopback address, very similar to the IPv4 loopback address. It's used for testing NICs and making sure we have IPv6 uh, software or addressing working. There's its prefix. And then we have something called the unspecified address. That's just, again, all zeros with a slash 128. And then we have this unique local. So unique local is going to be used for local addressing within a site or between a limited number of sites. So also kind of function like that private IP address where it can actually transverse intranets, right? Or different sites within a domain. So if you see this range, that is going to be unique local addresses. And that is going to be all the unicast addresses we go over. Again, guys, because of the way exam objectives are laid out, if you missed our other videos, they don't want you to go too deep in IVv6. So we are just going to go over these and make sure you know the prefixes, uh, what the differences are, but we're not going to get into the nitty gritty, go into the RFC, go into the binary of these addresses, right? We just got to make sure that you know how to recognize them on the exam. Okay, and then the global unicast address, just more of like how it's laid out, right? Um, usually the... 48 bits are going to be the global routing prefix. This is going to be its subnet ID. And I kind of did this in our last example. And then the rest of these 64 bits are going to be the interface ID. And I meant last video I went over this, guys. So go back to the last video. Kind of got ahead of myself, but that's okay. And then we have, right, the prefixes for the global unicast. Again, if you see this, that is going to be a global unicast address. If you see that prefix links. And 
And then actually, if we go back here, you can see those first three bits are really what we're looking at here to first identify a global range, right? Or what it can start with, the number two, the number three, right? All right. Okay, and then the link local address. As we can see here in our diagram, all these computers are gonna use communication, are gonna communicate via our actual link local address. We can see in this IPv6 link local packet, the source address and the destination address between this computer and this server. So within our LAN, we're just using link local, right? However, if we try to communicate using the link local addresses on this computer to the internet, it ain't gonna work, right? Now between this router at the ISP and this router here, we could use link local addresses on this segment because that's a whole different network, right? actually just take this out of the way for now you don't need to see my face to learn link local right and then we have again just more link local addresses continued so a link local address is unicast and it's going to be automatically configured on any interface using the link local prefix right of fe800 or sorry fe80 okay moving on So examples of using the IPv6 address. So for this computer to communicate to this router's interface, we can. And then also these routing protocol messages, something we're gonna learn about later on. They're gonna use the link local addresses of their neighbor to send some routing protocol messages. Okay, and then again, we have our global unicast address. Again, these slides are meant uh, for you guys to download and look over. That's why we're kind of going over the same things again and again. And then we have multicast addresses. So these are going to be very important, again, for you to recognize. So since we don't use broadcast in IBV6, we actually have a designated multicast group that all IBV6-enabled devices have to listen to. And that's going to be the FF02 colon colon one. So that's going to be called the all nodes multicast address. And then we have FF02 colon colon two. That's going to be all routers multicast group. Okay. So again, if you see this FF02 or this FF0 prefix, that is going to be a multicast address again important for you to know for the exam and then we have the solicited node multicast address so this is going to be mapped to a special ethernet multicast address and it's going to actually allow ethernet NICs to filter the frames based on the destination mac address okay so this would be actually specific multicast addresses, unlike this multicast here where everyone has to listen to it. We're going to be using our device's MAC addresses, or the MAC multicast, excuse me, to actually send specific multicast addresses to our devices on our LAN, okay? So this again allows for kind of what it says, solicited node multicast address. Well, we're sending that multicast, and if these computers' multicast MAC address or MAC addresses don't match, then they're like, hey, this isn't for me. But if this does match, coming from our user here, he can say, yes, my Ethernet NIC has determined this multicast is for me. Okay? Awesome. And then let's go over any cast addresses. So you're not going to find a prefix range for any cast addresses. And even though in our diagram here you see IPv4, any cast addresses are the same whether it's IPv4, or IPv6. So an any cast address is an 
IPv6 or IPv4 address that is assigned to a set of interfaces, but amongst different nodes, right? So a packet sent to an anycast address is going to be delivered to the closest interface. And this is going to be determined by a routing protocol, right? So as we can see here, client one needs to go to 10.1.1.10. And maybe this is DNS or a CDN or a cache server, right? For a very popular website. And let's say this client's in Phoenix, Arizona. This client's in New York. And they're both trying to reach this DNS server or this content delivery network server, right? Well, once that packet gets sent to router one, it's not going to send it over here to router four, let's say in Texas, and then over to router three in New York, and then back down to router five in Florida. It's going to go the shortest path and the closest address. Same with client two. Client two isn't going to connect to this server all the way, let's say, in Washington State. It's going to go to the closer one down here in Florida. Okay. That is going to be it for this video. Stay tuned for our next video where I'm just going to uh, open up a notepad and whiteboard and go over the EUI64 format. Essentially, this shows you how to convert a MAC address into um, an IPv6 address by adding in uh, bits, right? And then converting the seventh bit of the first hex tech, right? So we'll go over this, okay, guys? All right, thank you for viewing this video.